So the first one I want to go through is um, PLS discriminant analysis. Um, it's used for classification and variable selection. So classification analysis uh, is basically using a classifier or a supervised method to um, understand what is the relationship between the data and an outcome that you've measured. Um, so it's very different from PCA. In PCA, I showed you, you just plug in your data set um, and you don't say anything about, oh, my patients are sick or not sick. Here you do. Here you say, well, actually, I'm interested in discriminating um, cases and controls. Um, you can have different aims for classification analysis. You can um, be, you, you may want to just have a descriptive aim. So you want to, again, um, you know, build those linear combination of our bonds, but so that those components discriminates your groups of samples. Or uh, you may also want to have a predictive aim. So you, you have trained your model, and then you have a new data set, and you want to use exactly the same rules. You want to use exactly the same linear combinations to work out whether um, this individual is a case or is a control, for example. So it's more prediction-based. Um, and of course, you can build those classifiers based on all the variables you have, so all genes or you want to do variable selection, because you say, well, not all genes is going to tell me what's happening in my biological system, so I really want to only um, identify a subset um, of, um, of those genes. So I will refer to either a biomarker panel or a molecular signature when we talk about variable selection. And what is interesting with multivariate methods is that um, the, the diversity of your signature is quite high compared to univariate methods. So I'll show you an example here. We have each box plot represents the abundance of metabolites. So I'll only show you nine metabolites here. Um, each, um, on the x-axis, you have four groups of samples. It doesn't, here, I mean, this is a metabolite data in yeast, but it doesn't really matter, it's different conditions. Um, and this is a signature that was um, identified by a multivariate method. And so you can see the diversity of the profiles. Um, some metabolites are very good at discriminating a particular group uh, or two groups at a time against some other groups and so on. If you had used a univariate test, so for example, an ANOVA, you would only identify um, metabolites that look like this because you're just trying to maximize as much as possible the difference between one group and any of the other group. And so if that difference is very strong, this is the kind of profile you will always get as the strongest, the most differently expressed um, metabolite. So multivariate methods are different because I told you they combine information from different markers. And so they try to um, identify a complementary signature. Um, so you've seen that graph before uh, for PCA. And this is what we do when we want to also do the discriminant analysis. So we still have our data set as an input, but I also add another input, which is the outcome. So the outcome is going to tell me, well, patient one has treatment one, patient two has treatment two, patient three has treatment two, and so on. And this is what I want to discriminate. I want to discriminate the different treatments that those individuals have. I then do this matrix factorization technique that I explained to you before with PCA, where we extract the components and the loading vectors, except that this time we want to maximize um, the covariance between this data set and this outcome. So we add in the method compared to PCA, we add an extra layer of information that says, can you give me components that uh, combine all the genes that I have measured, but also so that they discriminate the different treatment groups? Um, and then we can also do feature selection. So using the loading vectors, I told you there are coefficients that are assigned to each gene. Some coefficients are very low, they're close to zero. So there's no, they, basically it means that they're not very useful to define your component. And so using um, lasso penalization, so it's a technique that we use in regression, you can uh, sh completely shrink, shrink these coefficients to zero 
so that in the end you only obtain a loading vector that has only very high value um, and n zeros. And the high values of those coefficients will correspond only to the genes that participate in the discrimination of your sample groups. So this is how you do uh, feature selection. Um, and then you can compare uh, a PCA plot on the left and a discriminant analysis plot on the right. Um, as I said before, PCA is unsupervised, so I didn't color my dots. So these are sample plots of 63 samples. Uh, and this is a data set with about 3,000 genes. In PCA, I didn't color my dots, so they're all blue, because I want to emphasize to you that it's an unsupervised method, so we don't know anything about the groups. Whereas in discriminant analysis, where I use PLSDA, I explicitly asked the method to discriminate my four groups of patients. Here they, are, um, they have different tumor subtypes. Um, and so you can start to see some discrimination happening. So it already tells you, oh, yep, I can discriminate my sample groups. Whereas in PCA, um, all you can say they are clusters of patients, but you don't know what it corresponds to so far. But you can identify outliers, you can identify you know, specific batch effects, and so on from there. OK, um, so we covered PCA, data exploration. We covered discriminant analysis, which is a supervised analysis, where basically we use the same concept as PCA, but this time we asked the method, can you discriminate sample groups? Can you identify the uh, discriminative genes in the linear combination that will tell me what's going on in this, um, in, in this, uh, in this data set? So you could stop here. Um, you can already, from, from a PLSDA plot, you can have the, exactly the same plot as the PCA. So you can stop here. You have a list of genes. You know how your samples are looking like in a reduced sample plot. Um, and you can start your validation if you want. You can do cross-validation and all these things to validate your model. And then you could, if you want to do, uh, go back to the lab and test this signature, for example. 